Good day to you sweet people of the internet and welcome along to another Jenny Kirk video here on my channel and we're going to be doing a three for today. That's three items we're going to take a good look at. Now these are items that we've done a full on review of before so what I'm going to concentrate on today is the livery. So without further ado let's take a closer look. We well, remember that we've looked at five I think so far of these particular wagons and um Really, after I got the first few, I like them so much. I've been trying to find every single version that Hornby have released, and so far I've done all right. I think there's only a three pack left, which I haven't been able to track down, and that's with the wagon in their Tops era HTO livery. But I managed to find these three from a friendly local model shop. We still had a few of the older wagons in stock. So let's take a look here. We've got uh, catalogue numbers uh, R6676, R6677 and R6725. So they represent two different years releases and it's one of the things that Hornby like to do is to put out a few different uh, running numbers uh, in the same uh, tranche of models released each year. So I tracked these down and these are the earlier livery details. So let's start with, actually we'll start with the one that's on its own and we can see here it's, they're all presented in the standard Hornby box but what we've got, let's have a look. Actually that's quite a bit easier to get into. You probably remember that when we did these last time they were something of a struggle to get them out of the boxes, but let's just get that out. Uh, one of the detractions, it has to be said, which does show up if you put these next to things such as the Backman 16 ton mineral wagons, is that one of the ways they've kept the price down is that the body is molded in body colour. So there's no, it doesn't appear to be any paint on the actual hopper itself, with the exception of the lettering and marking, which is done with a tempo printer. But it does mean that the grey seems a little bit on the light side when presented in a train with other wagons which are painted. Um, and I'm not really sure which ones are correct, but I suspect that a bit of weathering will work wonders on these particular wagons. I'm not going to really focus on the construction of these. We've covered that in the previous videos. If you want to look at how these are put together and a review of that, then uh, do feel free to go back and have a, a quick look at those videos. But the level of finish on these is pretty exquisite, just as we come to expect. Now, all of these are with fairly low running numbers. We've got here E253564, and uh, that represents one of the wagons that was built by the London and Northeastern Railway railway or at the very least in the uh, first few years of BR where they would still probably be using up old castings and um, numbered into the E series rather than the B series so which generally means it's a wagon that's been absorbed from London and Northeastern Railway stock. The iron ore is a bit of a mystery to me. Now I do know that these wagons were pressed into a number of different uh, traffic flows, probably most commonly um, to do with coal. I believe they were also used for coke, but iron ore is quite dense and it's one of the reasons that the iron ore tipplers, even though they appear to have the same volumetric dimensions internally as the 16 tonne mineral wagon, are rated for 27 tonnes. And actually when I went to the East Lanks Railway, there was a, uh, a tippler wagon and a 16 tonne mineral wagons next to each other. And one of the things that struck me was that uh, to tell them apart, there's an awful lot more leaves in the springs to be able to carry that extra weight on the iron ore tippler. But with these wagons there's no difference in the suspension and I'm not entirely sure whether there were a batch that were built with heftier suspension and that's not actually been modelled by Hornby but it's had the livery applied to it or maybe there was very strict controls as to how much could be loaded into these. That said everything about this is crisp and clean. We've got a lot of detail on the sole bar 
And we've also got our LNER works plate down in there. I'm not sure whether the very small writing shows exactly which works would have built this. I know Shildon built a lot, uh, possibly Darlington too. Well, we've got tempo printing here for the hopper door controls there with closed and arrows. We've got the tear weight, 1013, that means 10 tons, 1300 weight. However, a little mystery is that on the other side it says 9 tons and 600 weight, so Hornby, take your pick. But other little details here, these separately applied brake levers, well, these are some of the details that really sell these wagons for me. They're just so fine and, and well finished, a lovely crisp clear white ends on there. We've got the London and North Eastern stamped into the axle boxes, but I think we saw that on even the later BR ones. So I suspect that Hornby have tooled up for one particular wagon, but they've stretched it a little bit for some of the other livery applications. We've also got overhead warning flashes on these. So this suggests that whilst this is an earlier wagon, it's portrayed in a later BR, uh, probably late crest period. So we've got the overhead warning flashes, probably puts it from early 60s through to late 60s, maybe even into the 1970s. But certainly these wagons started to get rebranded as uh, Hop 21 or later still HTO. Now I'm going to put that one to one side and let's take a look at the next wagon. We've got here our 6677. So this is the wagon with the running number uh, E270706. And all of these were actually fairly easy to come by um, at the model shop that I use. It's got quite extensive stocks and uh, it's one of the things I noticed. If you want a wagon that's been around for some time, it's a good place to call in at and you're more likely to get them. They're sold out with the big box shifters and I'm starting to run into the, the same problem that we had last time. These boxes are ever so tight. Um, We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Okay, we've got into that now. And this has become quite a common feature for these wagons. So, let's see if we can get this out. Gosh, this is very tight fit. They've really rammed this into the space. Although I suspect that these boxes are formed around the inner packaging and probably in a machine that glues them and, and gets them really tight which is why sometimes it's a struggle to get uh, items back into the box. And that's interesting. The last wagon, nah, it didn't have, in fact I've not seen these in any of the other wagons, one of these sort of weird slippery plastic insert, just to stop it rubbing in transit. But it seems hit and miss as to whether these are actually in there. Uh, but I'm going to put that all to one side. And let's have a look at the livery application on this. Again, if we compare the two of them, there's a few differences, most notably that we don't have that iron ore branding, but we've got a similar works plate, which does appear to have a few extra details on there, but I, I can't really see. I suspect that this represents a wagon that's been built at a different location from this one, because if we look at the tear weight, we've got 1013 on the iron ore one, but we've got 96 on the regular one. That could actually represent that the full size version of this would have had beefed up suspension to be able to carry the extra weight of the denser iron ore, but that hasn't been represented in model form if that is the case. Again, all the finish is crisp, clean, there's no bleed over at all. I do love every single bit of these. They're probably the wagon of the year for me. I know they came out um, possibly last year or the year before, uh, but certainly for me, it's one of the standout wagons in the Hornby fleet. Again, we've got the overhead warning flash denoting a wagon, probably in the 1960s period. So one thing to watch out for if you're wanting these for the early BR period, you might want to remove these overhead warning flashes if that is the case. Um, everything else is exquisitely finished. There's not really anything I can criticize with these wagons. Again, if you want to look at the construction and review thereof, uh, have a look back at my earlier videos concerning the 21 ton hopper wagons. Right, final one in this trio. Again, we're probably gonna have to... Uh... Oh no, there we go. 
we're not going to have to deploy the test card and do some swearing in private. Not quite as tight, but that is really fierce and tight in some of these. Um, let's have a look. That's interesting, actually. Is that? No, oh, that. Oh, they are the same. And again, it must be a year thing because these two wagons are adjacent catalogue numbers, which means that they would have come out together. So maybe Hornby went through a phase of using slightly different packaging. Right, again, let's have a look at this. This appears to have pretty much the same works plates as, uh, as this one, but in terms of detail, or the tempo printed on the sole bar, we can see that there's actually quite a bit of detail difference, even on adjacent catalogue numbers. So we've got a tear weight on here of nine, nine tons, 900 weight. So this wagon is 300 weight heavier than this wagon when empty. I'm not entirely sure why that would be. It could be differences between if the wagon's been repaired, it might have gained a few metal plates riveted on there to cover up rust holes. Um, but also if it's been made in a different workshop, then sometimes there can be minor variations in the materials used or the methods of construction that can account for these slight differences in tear weights. We've got a, what appears to be a chart down here stamped onto the sole bar. And I think some of this is to do with maintenance regimes. Now, this wagon doesn't have it. And that would suggest that these two were on different flows in different areas of the country and maybe even were built at different workshops. We've also, what else have we got? Well, actually, both of these have got wheelbase 12 feet long. That's something that was... That's actually missing from the, the iron ore branded version. There's nothing to do with the, its wheelbase on there. Although any railway man worth his salts would know instinctively how long a lot of these were. They tended to swat up on the details. Anything else we've got going on? Well, if I turn it end on, just for a bit of variety in freight trains, you can see it's got double overhead warning flashes as opposed to the single one that's on there. And actually, yeah, yeah, and that one too has only got a single warning flash. Now, I'm not sure whether at some point the um, the manner with which these were applied to real wagons changed and maybe went from single to double or vice versa. I suspect that at some point you can date the livery for these wagons because the, the double warning head flashes may have come in. But other than that, there is nothing to fault on these wagons. These are a brilliant addition to my wagon fleet. And I'm looking forward to running a nice dedicated uh, 21 ton hopper train, which I can now do. I've got um, eight of them now, which is enough for a fairly short train. But certainly, nonetheless, that's going to look really good when I go up in the loft and start building my rendition of Tyne Yard and ultimately Kirby Stephen East. I've seen a lot of photographs of these wagons trundling through there. So they are a welcome edition from Hornby and uh, long may they continue to bring out more running numbers and more livery variations. Well I hope that was enjoyable for you, don't forget to like this video, share it too and also subscribe to the channel, you'll be first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But until next time, good people, you take very good care of yourself and until next time, bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And a special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Mark Anthony and Michael Churchwood. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.